Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of an EVO, which stands for Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft. And for that, we're going to use a public 3D model of the Archer Midnight. It's not accurate at all, it's just to show you what it's like. And we're going to run CFD simulations, which is computational fluid dynamics. And for that, we're going to use a platform called Airshaper. Let me show you how it's done. So you simply drag and drop the file into Airshaper. It'll upload, and once you click Next, it'll convert for easy viewing in the browser. Once the conversion is done, you'll see the model in your viewer. And the cool thing is that you don't need to simplify your model by taking away small components. You can have components with, you can have up to 10,000 components and you don't need to do CAD repair to close every gap or hole because the platform is flexible, can work with non-watertight geometries. So you simply need to set whether it's on the ground or above the ground. You can actually do takeoff and landing simulations just to see what kind of thrust changes you get when the propellers are actually operating in proximity to the ground and so on. In this case, let's go for a hover scenario in which the aircraft is just static. I'll just point it into the wind to just have a nice reference position. I'll hit the set reference button so this position is now the reference without any pitch roll or yaw angle uh, to calculate the platform area and so on, which will be done automatically. The velocity, we'll just set it to zero. That'll automatically trigger a wind tunnel in which the walls are actually open on the side so air can actually move out and in um, as the propellers draw or push air in or out of the boundary domain. We'll select the units. In this case, it's meters and the scale would be approximately two, a factor two, so we have a wingspan of around 12 meters. Might be a bit too much, too little, um, but just uh, for the purpose of illustration. Then we can set the propellers. So if you set the propeller behind the scenes, the calculation will create a cylindrical shape around the propeller, um, excluding the part which would touch the static parts. So that will not be included in the rotation. And it'll automatically detect the central axis of rotation, as you can see here. And you can set the RPM uh, as well. So you can just do this for all propellers that you have. Just click on the components, hit the OK button. Uh, if you want, you can switch the direction of rotation if it's not correct. That's the only thing you need to do. If you set the RPM to a value which is too high, you might get a, you will get a warning that your tip speed exceeds max 0.3. You can still run it at your own risk and you will get a full stop if your velocity actually exceeds max 0.6 because by then the compressibility effects are actually far too severe uh, to ignore. So let's just leave this one at 1000, for example. And I'll set just one more propeller here at the rear, uh, just to finish the process, maybe switch this direction um, so that it's correct and that's it. You can select all the propellers and then you can hit the next button. And on this page, you can actually select the simulation type that you would like to use. So the basic simulation is very coarse. It doesn't actually include rotating elements like propellers and so on is just for hobbyists and students to compare very basic initial concepts if you're comparing a delta wing versus a normal airplane versus anything that is related. The regular simulation has 10 million cells, so 10 times more, and this is far more accurate. It includes the propeller simulations that we just discussed. It also has the option to include radiators if you want to analyze cooling. It comes with the full PDF report, and the cool thing is that um, this, is, this is all automated and you can compare detailed designs using this uh, simulation. If you really want to pin down the last details, the last optimizations in your simulation, you can go for the advanced simulation, which is basically the same as regular, only the resolution will be, boom, uh, will be bumped up to 50 to 100 million cells. So a very high resolution there. So once you launch the simulation, everything will be pushed to a dedicated server just for your simulation in the high performance computing infrastructure, which means that more than 100 CPUs in our case will be used just for your simulation to get it there in a very short turnaround time. So within two to three hours, a regular simulation normally is finished and you'll get an email. Then you'll be able to use the visualizations online in the platform to understand what aerodynamics are like and how you can improve your design. So let's have a look at that as well. So once the simulation has finished, you'll see these visualizations in your browser. These, these have all been predefined for you, uh, so you don't need to set anything yourself. What you can do is look at the first one, which is the 3D pressure cloud visualization. This one actually indicates where you're losing energy. 
And typically with an eVTOL around the propellers, there's a lot of energy loss, which is normal. There's a lot of vortices, um, inefficiencies uh, generated there. Um, you can also see how the downwash of the propellers actually interacts with the fuselage. Um, of course, this depends heav heavily on the geometry of the propellers. Uh, and this, again, is a public 3D model. Um, you can look at the surface pressure patterns, the surface friction to understand what the flow lines are like on the surface. You can really see how they curve and how this flow, which is being drawn from the top towards the wing, splits between left and right um, as it hits the wing. So you can see this separation or this divide line here uh, between the left and the right part of the flow. You can look at these streamlines, you can move them up and down uh, to really see how the flow is being drawn in by the propellers. Uh, and keep in mind that the scales of the colors are actually tuned to have the best possible visual visualization for the propellers. Uh, we'll get to that later on. There is a rough indication of wind noise, uh, which you can change in terms of scale when you download the full simulation data. But you'll typically see that in this case, there's quite a lot of uh, noise generated uh, by the tips of the propellers, which is why they have this specific shape in this case. You can look at the elements. So if you have set up propellers, you can automatically use the interface when you click on elements to click on a propeller and you'll get the data that was calculated for each individual propeller. So you'll get torque, power and thrust values and you also get an indication of the propeller coefficients. Um, the efficiency is zero because this one is at standstill so there is actually no efficiency because that one is linked to the advanced ratio. Advanced ratio. But there is a thrust coefficient and a power coefficient available uh, for these propellers in this simulation. If you move to cruise flight, you will get, of course, efficiency values um, if these propellers are positioned in a forward uh, direction. Then you can also move to the forces interface, allowing you to click on each individual component. And then you can understand what is happening in terms of forces on each individual blade, what the forces on the fuselage, on the wing, and so on, uh, with just a click of a button. You don't need to split your model yourself. This is all done in an automated way through the Airshaper platform. Now, if you don't like the visualizations or these are not enough for what you want to actually understand, then you can download the full simulation data. And this will allow you to process the data in a software called Paraview. This is free and open source software, which allows you to just load the Airshaper data at no extra cost and make your own visualizations using different pressure map values, different uh, sources for the streamlines and so on. So that's it for our short analysis on eVTOL Aerodynamics. I hope you liked the video and I'll probably have more questions so if you do drop a comment below the video or get in touch with us directly thanks a lot for watching see you soon bye bye